Hey guys, welcome, welcome, welcome to my channel. And if you're a returning viewer, welcome back. Thanks so much for stopping by. All right, guys, so today I have a review video for you guys. I'm so, so, so excited to share this review with you because these pencils have blown me absolutely away, okay? Um, they're, they're just absolutely amazing. So let's just jump right on into this review. Let me let you know that I will be uh, putting a link for these pencils in the description below so that you guys can find them because there are several sets that are shuttle art pencils that are different from these. They look different. They are different quality. These say premium quality, rich pigment and 4.0 soft core. There are some um, shuttle art pencils that are very different. They look different, the quality is different, so be careful not to get them. Be sure to get this specific one, 174 colored pencils. Not the 180, not the 172. I'm not sure about the 138. I think they have a set that's like 138. It looks just like these. It's in a tan, small, kind of just like these. They are but only a few bucks cheaper. For us, you get so you get like 138 pencils. Um, it's like only $10 more or $8 more to get the 174 count. So, and I think you get more bonus materials with this 174 one. So get this one guys, this one is the best deal. And I know about these pencils. I don't know about the 130 something. So, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, excuse me if I clear my throat a few times during this video. I'm having a lot of sinus issues. I get to go to the ear, nose, and throat doctor in a little bit. I know you don't want to hear about that. This is a review video. Okay, Nisi, get on track. <laughs> All right, guys. So <clears throat> these pencils come in this beautiful tin here. Very nice tin. I like how it's deep. It's a deep tin. It's not that big long tin that you see most colored pencils come in. So it's a deep tin and I plan on repurposing this tin because it's amazing. It's really nice quality. I know you're like a tin, nice quality, but I can see putting markers or, you know, a lot of stuff in this tin because it's, it's, it's taller. So they have their information here on the back. They also have a little information here on the inner top, the top of the uh, lid. They have some little information here and, and you know, tell you about the pencil and everything. <clears throat> so of course I have already placed them in a case, but not only do you get the 174 pencils, you also get four pencil extenders and four pencil sharpeners. No, 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 do you get four pencil extenders? You get four pencil sharpeners and two pencil extenders, I think. Yeah, I think that's all right. But of course, both of these are super, super like cheap quality. I actually use one of these pencil extenders and it wouldn't hold my pencil. So I had to like wrap some stuff around it to make it hold, but that's okay. It was, it was free, it was included. It also comes with this coloring book which we will be testing out today to see how the pencils work. Very nice coloring book. It's double-sided. It's got some cute little images in it. And last but not least, it comes with a 50 sheet sketch pad. Now it says that these sheets are 100 GSM, which is very nice. Is that's that's like the GSM of a lot of card stocks, but the paper doesn't really feel like card stock. It, it has a very rough texture, which I'm assuming is very toothy. So which I'm assuming that is going to be good for these type of pencils because um, these pencils are marketed as wax based, but they color and feel like an oil based pencil. So We'll get into that later, okay? So I understand why they have this rough textured paper in here, but it's not really super, super thick. And it's kind of got like a cream color, but it's it's good because it's it's almost free. It's pretty much free. You got that in the in the whole little package deal. All right, so what we are going to do next is actually show you guys 
the pencils. I know you've been waiting for this. <laughs> All right, so there are 174 pencils, so I had to put them in this, I think this is a 180 or 160 case, but I had to put them, you know, squeeze them up in here because they almost didn't fit. But if you would like to see how I organize them, because I had to, the way that they came in the trays, they were not you know, organize how I like my pencils to be organized in certain colors and so forth. So if you would like to see um, like my color chart and see more of an in-depth way how I organize uh, my color pencils, just let me know in the comments below. So here are the pencils. Let me give you an overview. Look how much, how, look how many reds you have. Oh, they are not shy on how many uh, browns you get. You get a very nice array of browns. You get a very, very nice array of grays. Beautiful, beautiful array of reds. They go all the way over here. Then your yellows and oranges are a little bit lacking, but that's okay because I have other sets that have plenty of yellows and oranges. And to me, this set put the right amount of stuff we needed as colorists. All of these colors here from uh, this pink, light pink, to this uh, kind of, it's, it says pale yellow. I probably need to trade those. Yeah, so from this light yellow to this light pink, these are all really, really light pastel -y type of yellows. They are beautiful skin tones. Oh my goodness. They, they color amazing. Their light colored pencils do not cover. They don't, they're not dark. I know that may not make sense to you, but some pencils have a, a so-called skin tone in them, but they just, it, the color is just too saturated and too dark and you can't get it no matter what you do. You can't get it light enough, you know, to, to do what you want it to do. These are amazing. Okay, so anyway, you have those pinks there and a few pinks here. So the pinks, the yellows, the oranges lacking. And that's okay because I don't use very many of, I use quite a bit of yellow and I use quite a bit of orange in my Prismacolor set. Uh, I wish they wouldn't have given us so many purples. I mean, they got like 18,000 purples. <laughs> so they, this is a purple set. If you love the color purple, get this set because they have, oh my goodness, it starts right here at plum and goes all the way over here to the color bluish purple, okay? They gave us a wonderful array of blues. I'm so proud of that. The blues go all the way over here to the greenish blue and the dark bluish green. So the, the blues, amazing. Next, the greens. I'm so impressed with how many greens that they gave us. It's amazing. And shockingly, guys, all these colors are not the same. You know how you can get um, these uh, cheaper budget type sets and you're like, man, like three of the pencils are exactly the same color. <laughs> I mean, that's even in, in pencil, um, let's see, pencil, pencil sets like, let's see, the Castle Art. Castle Art did a pretty good, a pretty good job in not doing that. But I know like my Hero pencils, let's see. Yeah, like like here with Crayola, the bl the bubble gum and the tickle me pink and yeah, those two they look almost exactly the same. So it's it's kind of crazy. So this set was really good about varying the colors very well. So I'm happy about that. All right, so here is my uh, swatch book. I've swatched them all out and this is the order I have them in in my case and now I've moved around the pale yellow and the light yellow and that's not the way it is in my case so the OCD is not going to let me do that so I'm going to put that right back there like that. <laughs> 
<laughs> All right, guys, so let's take a look at the color chart. How beautiful these colors are. Isn't that lovely? Okay, get you a little closer here and let you see this page one more time. There are quite a few of metallics. Let's see, I think it's 12. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Yes, it's 12 metallics in this set. And you can't find metallics in like high end pencil sets. They just don't exist. Uh, they'll have the gold and the silver metallic and that's it. And you may be the type of person to say, well, I don't need metallics. I don't even color with metallics. I've seen a lot of people say, I don't know what to do with my metallics. Hey, I am going to have a video coming out very, 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 very soon that shows you how I use my metallic pencils. I love my metallic pencils. So here is the color chart. I'm gonna sit that to the side. Now let me tell you a little bit about these pencils. They are marketed as a wax-based pencil. But, but, let me tell you, they color and feel just like a oil-based pencil. There are a couple of big time uh, color supply, art supply uh, review YouTubers. One of them is Art Gear Guide and the other one is I think Coloring Caria or something. But anyway, they have tens of thousands of subscribers and they do a lot of pencil reviews. And they made a very, very, very good point. I will link their channels below. And I will also link the videos below where they talk about oil-based and wax-based pencils. And I'm going to actually probably make a separate video about that because I don't want this video to get off course too much. I want this to be solely about these pencils. But they made the comment, oil-based, wax-based, there really is no like black and white, this is oil-based, this is wax-based type of line. All pencils have a measure of oil in them. All pencils have a measure of wax in them. Even your polychromos have a mixture of oil and wax. Now, the way that they say this is a wax-based pencil and this is a oil-based pencil is the amount of oil and wax or the ratio that they have in the pencil that causes them to be verified or, uh, you know, not verified, <laughs> identified as an oil base or wax base. So, um, I don't know exactly how these companies are uh, determining, hey, this is oil base, this is wax base, but these pencils here, the Shuttle Art feels exactly like a wax based pencil and, and I'm going to show you that in another video um, comparing them directly to polychromos so that just putting that out there they are soft they, they have a good soft lay down uh, they don't lay down of course as soft as the Prismacolors no pencil is like the Prismacolors but they feel a lot like the polychromos laying down and the way that they color. It feels like the polychromos. They remind me a lot of the Spira Farben uh, oil-based color pencils. They remind me a lot of those and the way that they glide across the paper and how they color. But um, they are they are identified as wax-based, which I don't believe. I believe the person, the factory that they made them at must have threw a little bit more oil in them than they expected and made them into an incredible pencil and didn't even know it. <laughs> but anyways, uh, you have on the pencil. Now, I'm just going to mention you have the name and the number and on the pencil and the ends are uh, 
dipped with the color of the lead and it is capped. That is, and on the other side, it says shuttle art and it's a matte barrel with a silver, silver um, ring around it. <laughs> For them to do all of this to a pencil is amazing. I mean, this is a budget friendly pencil. When, when I bought it, when I bought the set, this whole thing was under $30. But now the price has increased a little bit because of the demand of them. They stay out of stock. If you if you find them in stock or if they say order now will be in stock, get them because they will be out of stock as soon as they come back in stock. I don't know if they're going to stay around long, but I got me two sets, okay? Because <laughs> you can't get these open stock. If you run out of one, you're going to have to purchase a whole set. But I have a feeling that these particular pencils are going to be just like the Hero Guanghui Guang Hui pencils. When they first came out, everybody was getting those Hero pencils. Now you can't find them. You can find them on Hero's site, but it's just, it's, and they had a formula that was different than their sister pencils, which were the One Shui and South Sun and all those other budget pencils. Their formula was a little bit different. So I have a feeling that these are, when they go, when they go, they're going to go and they're not coming back. <laughs> so get them if you can. I'm just saying. So for them to put all of this on a pencil, it's it's pretty amazing. It's, it's, it's pretty amazing. There are only a few pencils in here that don't match. The lead doesn't match the name or the end of the barrel. Just a couple of pencils. Not many um, are like that, but there are just a couple that have named their pencil. Um, I think one of them is called like pale red or something, and it's it's pink all day. <laughs> and then like one is called uh, rosy pink, and it's like, no, that's not one of them. It's another one, but it's like an off name, and I'm like, that should have been called peach, the pencil that, that they named uh, something else but anyway oh yeah the shallow orange that should have been called peach because it's peach <laughs> but the the tip the dipped in is the exact same color so that's okay you can go by the dipped in and not the name but for them to put all this into a pencil a budget pencil guys the budget pencil industry has really really, really, really stepped up their game. They have started to put names and numbers on these pencils. They have increased their quality of the wood that their pencils are encased in. They have uh, made larger leads. This is a four millimeter lead, guys. This is a lead like Durant, okay? I honestly think this lead might be thicker than Faber Castell. The pencil barrel itself is not as quick, uh, thick as Derwent or Faber Castell, but it's, I think it's a little bit bigger than, than Prismacolor. Let me see. Let me get a Prismacolor and see. Nope, they're the same. Well, wait a minute. Does that look the same to you? I don't know. They look a little bit, just a smidge bigger. Yeah, they look a tiny bit bigger than the Prismacolor, the barrel. But I definitely know that it has a definite thicker uh, lead than the Prismacolor. I think the Prismacolor is maybe a 3.4 size lead. And these are a super thick lead. And they, they say that helps with uh, breakage. And... I haven't had a problem with any of them breaking. I mean, don't get me wrong. The quality of, you know, seeing the pencil themselves is not Fiber Castell quality, of course, because you get what you pay for, so to speak. But this set, hey, it's very, very, very close. It's a, it's an, I haven't seen a value like this and a good pencil like this since Spear of Harbin first came out, Okay. Now, Sphere of Harbin is a great pencil, don't get me wrong, but 50 plus bucks for 96 pencil is a little steep, okay? It's a little steep. When you can get these for 30 something under 40 and you're getting 172, okay, double the amount. So that's why I'm sold. 
All right, so moving on into the rest of the review. Let's get to coloring, guys. Let's show you guys uh, what is going on with the coloring. All right, first and foremost, I want to show you on a piece of cardstock, you only have to barely touch the paper to get pigment out. I am amazed. So I have this piece of cardstock here. I am going to zoom you guys in a bit so that you can see what I mean. All right, so let's get my favorite colors to test are usually the black to see how black it is. I'm gonna give this a little bit of a sharpen. And now I need to talk to you about the sharpening of the pencil. I just sharpened away a lot of my black because I didn't realize that these pencils, because of their soft core, they needed to be sharpened like a Prismacolor pencil. So I was trying to use my small hole on my Stadler pencil sharpener and it was breaking, constantly breaking. So I had to switch over to my bigger hole, which made this small, um, shorter point. This is what I have to do for my Prisma pencils to keep them from breaking. So that's a little bit of tip. You may need to use your Tegal or some type of pencil sharpener that you use for your Prismas. So yes, that is tip one, but that's okay because my Prismas do the exact same thing. So I'm going to barely touch the page. Look at that. I'm using such teeny tiny pressure not bearing down at all. So we're gonna do a layer test. That's one layer. That's two layers. I'm gonna actually put the one layer over here too. That's three layers. Four. Five, and I'm, I'm Pressing down a little bit harder as I get more of my layers. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's ten layers. I'm going to stop there because I do not do no ten layers on any pencil. So, hey, you got ten layers on there and it can take more layers than that. So let's do hard pressure and just burnish it in. Oh, that's a beautiful black. That's so black. Look at that. Beautiful, guys. Oh, my goodness. Oh, I hate that my black, I did that to my black, but it, it, um, I didn't realize that they needed sharpening like that. Oh, my poor little black. All right, let's try the red. Here's one layer, very soft. One, two, three. And you can see, you can see it taking the, 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 paint, the color. Five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right. This paper that I'm using is a cardstock. Um, it's Georgia Pacific cardstock that I usually print my coloring pages on. So this is the perfect paper for me to do the test on because this is what I usually use for my coloring when I print out the coloring page. So there's your red. You see, there's a little bit of a wax buildup. But you can just take your finger, and I have to do this with Prismacolor. It's smearing the color too, so that color is really saturated. You just take your finger and just kind of rub it over it, and that wax goes away. So you know this is definitely a wax pencil. That's what it's advertised as. At no way or shape or form am I saying that this is an oil-based pencil and it's exactly like the, the polychromos. No, I'm not saying that. I'm saying when you see this next video that's coming up soon, you're going to see 
what I mean by this pencil has to have more oil in it than it's claiming and it performs a lot like the polychromos. You'll see that in the next video, but it definitely has wax in it. It's definitely wax. It's not waxy, but because a lot of my pencils are very waxy. A lot of the budget-friendly pencils, they end up getting really, really waxy. And that's, I don't like that. But anyway, for me to be able to smear that pigment with my finger, that shows you that the pigment is real. It's, 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 it's building up. It's actually building up and not just burnishing into the paper as you do more layers. You know what I mean? Some uh, budget pencils, they stop uh, allowing you to uh, build up the color after so long. And then it just feels like they just, they just you're just coloring on top of plastic or something. That's what it ends up feeling like. Let's do one more. Let's do a green. Let's do their mint color. And I'm going to do a little bit of sharpening. So we're going to do no pressure at all, hardly. Now we're going to do our 10 layers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now let's do our heavy pressure. Because you guys know I'm heavy-handed. That's beautiful coverage. Beautiful. Let's get another green. Let's get a... Let's get the medium sea green. That's a darker green. Oh, that's a pretty green. So that's light pressure. One, two, three, four... Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Actually, eleven, but we just was gonna say ten. Oh, I love how it it's almost like they're they're coloring on the paper kind of dry, which is just like the polychromos. To me, the polychromos colors on paper in a dry kind of manner. And where is my brush? Oh, there it is. So you see that? That is beautiful, 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 beautiful. All right, let's do one more color, which will be a blue. So let's see which blue. Let's try the deep blue. Give it a little sharpen. Oh man, it amazes me how it allows you to just barely touch the paper. I might, you know I'm heavy handed guys. I might be getting into the lighter handed world because this is, this is interesting. I'm liking this lighter handed stuff. <laughs> now I don't know how many, um, layers I did on that one. I was just doing something. Oh, I love it. I love it. I love it, guys. There's your blue. So there are all your colors. So I'm going to write it down so we can see one light layer, 10 light layers, and one heavy layer. All right, guys, that, that was awesome. I enjoyed that. So I'm gonna zoom you back out. So we got that test done. Now let's try a little bit of coloring. I will be using uh, a cardstock 
that I usually print my stuff on. So this is a picture by Tabitha Barnett uh, her, from one of her books. It's Her books are so cute. So let's see. I've color, colored this page before, but I used some other pencils. I forgot what pencils I used. But anyway, let's do just a little something just to see how these pencils feel. So, and see how they blend. What should we color? Let's start with this door right here. Okay. All right, so let's make us a red door. Let me get my color chart out so that I can see what I'm doing and what I'm working with. You know what? Let me let me start with one of these colors that are named completely absolutely wrong. Let's see where is it? Deep pink and Okay. Here are two pencils. You see the lead? The lead is obviously red. They're in with my reds and one is called let me show you here too. This one is called deep pink and that might can be considered as a deep pink. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to fuss about that. Yeah, that might be deep pink. But this one that's named peach, there is no way that that's peach. <laughs> no way. So they should have named this peach up here. Let's see, where is that peach? Right here, shallow orange. They could have named this red one down here that they named Peach. They need to swap those names. And they might have made a mistake on that. That 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 shallow orange need to be Peach. Like, seriously. But anyway, we're going to use one of these crazy named uh, pencils. <laughs> Let's use the Peach. <laughs> But I don't, I'm not, I'm not fussing about the name being, you know, crazy y'all. I'm not fussing about that. You know, it's okay. As long as it has a name on it, that's all that matters to me. Okay. So let's start with, oh, that feels so good. I'm actually not uh, coloring like really super heavy handed either, which I usually do. So that's something different. All right. Oh, this, it feels so good going down. All right. So I'm getting a little bit, I'm sorry if I had you out of frame, getting a little bit heavier handed where that transition is and I'm actually layering. I don't I don't usually layer like this, guys. Let's move on to our next transition color and see what happens. I think I'm going to let the next color be bright orange red. Let's see where is that one? Well, bright orange red, where are you? Oh, here you are, hiding in the corner. Okay, sharpen it up a little bit. Now, let's try to be a little bit lighter handed, Nisi. I'm going on top. Trying to do a little bit of layering. I'm trying to learn a new coloring technique of trying to be a little bit lighter handed and trying to layer more. I'm happy with my coloring technique, how I color, and I will be sharing that with you in a future video. I love the way I color. I love my heavy handed, you know, technique with my Prisma colors, but, but... I cannot follow that same technique with uh, certain pencils like these, like polychromos, pencils that have a little bit harder lead. They, they want you to layer. 
They require you to layer and be a little bit softer handed. My Prismacolors don't mind me being heavy handed. But pencils like these and the uh, Polychromos, my heavy hand is a no and a no. All right, our next color we're going to do is Pumpkin Yellow. And where is that? That's in my... Where are you, Pumpkin Yellow? There you are, hiding from me. Okay. And we're going to try to... Okay, I'm trying not to be heavy-handed. Oh my goodness, this is so hard. I want to burnish so badly oh I'm really liking this I'm really 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 liking this how they color and usually I will take my white pencil and just kind of melt that whole thing together now you kind of see there is a wax like a wax buildup because I was being a little bit too heavy handed, just a little bit too heavy. So let's do our white pencil in the middle to kind of blend everything together. Now all I do usually is, I'm sure you can probably take a tissue, but I usually just use my finger and take that wax off. See that guys? That's that's very vibrant and nice. I think that's that's pretty nice. Let's do a heavy layer of the red around the door. And let's make the doorknob black. There we go. And I think we're going to do, let's do, let's use the metallic blue to color in, show you how I use my metallics. To color in uh, the window. So with my metallics, I use a heavy, you know what, I need something to put this on, this, this, my background is too soft. I had to get a clipboard. I was noticing my the coloring was kind of going through. I could see the imprint when I press hard. I could see kind of like the imprint of um, when I was coloring. So how I use my metallics, I just use them like regular colored pencils. I do like a, my heavy darker layer on the edges and then I do like a lighter area where I want it and I'm gonna take my white pencil and just go over that little lighter area sometimes you'll have to take your metallic again and go over a little area that you want a little bit darker but that's it I like it guys and I can let's see if it'll layer even further let me do a little bit more layering on the door get a darker a darker red let's see let's get dark brownish red dark brownish red right here sharpen it up a little bit and let's see if it'll take some more layers so that I can do a little bit of shadowing. Yeah, it's taking a layer. It's not taking it very well because I've already pretty much burnished, burnished it. But it's taking it good enough, taking it pretty well. It's taking it just as well as any other budget pencil or any other pencil that you burnish your work with. OK, 
Okay. I like that, guys. That's nice. That's very, very nice. All right. So we got that. Now let's try how it will behave in a Johanna Bassford book. So let's get a flower. Let's try, let's see, let's try this little tiny flower here. And this time I'm going to use the dark brownish red. We're gonna just use the same colors that we used before. And I'm going to try layering this time instead of burnishing. Oh, I'm using such a light hand. I'm so proud of myself. Okay, so that was layer number one. Let's go in with the peach. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to have to call this peach red because there is no way I'm going to sit here and call this a peach because it's definitely not a peach. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Looking good, looking good, Shuttle Arts. I'm liking the way you are behaving in this Magical Jungle book. So I'm going in with a second layer of the peach, aka red. Now let's go in with a layer of the pumpkin yellow. Oh my goodness, it's layering so beautifully. I am amazed. And I'm going out of the lines. That's okay. That's what happens when you color without your glasses. Let's go in with that peach, AKA red again. And I'm going to color a little bit harder. Now, let's see. Let's finish it off with this pumpkin yellow. Burnishing it, burnishing all those colors together. And they don't cause, they don't cause muddiness on your page when you do those layers of different colors. You know, sometimes you can get like a muddy look. That's a pretty autumn-like color. Has a little shine to it, but that's okay. So does the other pencils that I used here. I don't know what, what it was that I used, but they have that same thing. So let's see if it will allow me to put a color over something that I've already colored, like the middle. Let's see if it'll let me put like a brown, a dark brown in that middle. We're gonna use the bronze. Okay, now I guess the black was just bad because now I'm able to use my other side of my sharpener to get a little bit sharper point. So I guess that might have just been the black misbehaving. Oh yeah, it's letting me layer on top of what I've already colored. Now that's a good sign. Because a lot of times budget pencils will not let you do that. Oh, that's nice. I like that. Let's see if I can lightly do a little bit more shadows. It's working. It's letting me do those shadows on top of the color with a light touch. Oh, 
I'm loving it, guys. I really like it. I really like them, rather. I'm messing it up now. <laughs> but that's okay. You you get the point. <laughs> All right. I love it. I love it, guys. That was awesome. So, we have tested it out. I don't even think I need to try testing it out in their coloring book because let me see it's smooth yeah johanna's paper in her book kind of has smooth smooth enough paper and they felt the same so the cardstock paper was pretty smooth well not pretty smooth but it was like a, a toothy enough it was pretty toothy so it performed well they performed well in that so that's the review guys of these shuttle art premium colored pencils. Thank you so much for sticking it out with me and watching this video. If you enjoyed this review, please give this video a big old thumbs up. If you enjoy adult coloring, please give this video a thumbs up. That lets YouTube know that you enjoy my videos and it lets me know that also. If you haven't already subscribed, please consider subscribing. Let me know that, you know, you want the Dollar Diva to stay around for a little while, okay? <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you. Thank you so much. I will be posting a link in the description it will be an affiliate link to these pencils on amazon uh, i will get a little tiny compensation uh, through that affiliate link that helps the channel to continue to grow and prosper so thank you again for watching and as always happy coloring guys bye